All right, hello everyone watching on Twitch and hello everyone to watch. <sighs> Hera, speak, speak, please speak English. Hello YouTube. No, no. <laughs> okay, one more time, one more time, one more time. <laughs> Shit. Hello everyone watching on Twitch and hello to everyone watching on YouTube. This is the first time we're doing this intro. People on Twitch know I get these first try and uh, we're gonna be doing a tutorial against the Extreme AI again today. So I've done this once in the past a few months ago, but it's a bit outdated right now. You guys want the, you know, the fresh content here and I know you guys are still struggling with the AI. Why? You're not drinking enough G Fuel, man. Like I'm, I'm sponsored by G Fuel for a reason. We're trying to make better players here. Get those G Fuel products, link in the description, 10% off using code Hera. That's why you guys aren't that good at this game. But the other reason is because you guys aren't using build orders. And that brings me to the main point of the video, which is using build orders to take care of the easy AI. No, not the easy AI. We're actually going to go to the extreme AI because we're extreme people. Okay. So we're gonna play against the extreme AI here and it's gonna be based on focusing on the early game and build orders. And you might be asking, Hera, what's a build order? A build order is basically just something to guide you through the early stages of the game. Now we're bringing it to more serious notes. Uh, it guides you through the early stages of the game and allows you to always have consistent starts and not be confused as to where your first few villages should go. And it sets you to allocate your resources perfectly to execute a build or a unit type. So for example, I want to share my builders. I offer these to subscribers to my Twitch stream in my Discord. Again, links in the description on YouTube. But here's one of the builders that we're going to use today. Last time I did one of these guides, I used the Scout Builder. This time I want to showcase the Straight Archers. This is how they look like, the new builders we have here. And uh, I know that I packed a lot of sellout in this beginning vid, uh, or this first part of the video, but uh, I promise you we're gonna get into the gameplay soon. But I'm gonna follow this step by step. I've already you know, memorized it pretty much. If you guys wanna pause, take a look at it, there's plenty more like this. In fact, the document has like, what is this? Like 10, 15 of them, uh, all available to, like I said, Twitch subs. And I'm gonna go through it and use, uh, use it against the Extreme AI here and showcase how to better your early game and take out the Extreme AI. All right, guys, so that's a free one for you guys. Uh, let's go ahead and pick uh, let's pick a standard sieve here. I don't want one of the crazy eco bonus, but I, I want to showcase archers. So let's pick a good archer sieve here. Um, let's say something like, I don't know, let's say something like Britons comes to mind, all right? So I'm going to pick Britons, it's an archer sieve, and we're going to showcase this archer builder against the extreme AI. And I'm going to walk you through the steps that, it, you know, a simple few steps that it takes to get this early game down. Obviously, it requires a lot of practice, but uh, I'm here to showcase uh, how to do it, and you guys practice on your own time. Let's hop into it here with some builders. So beating the extreme AI, like I said, a lot to do with the early game, and it's very important to practice this. Um, we're gonna start it off by just picking up our sheep. This is fairly standard here. Uh, bring in the sheep for everyone here. All right, very nice. So as you can see, I hope you guys have uh, the build order printed out somewhere on the side. Maybe you guys can follow along or just use it for memory. I'm gonna be scouting with some sheep as well. It helps you get some early development here on the sides. Uh, lets you scout the map very, very nice as well. Um, and uh, since we're Britons, we're actually going to go only 5 on sheep, but with a generic sieve. Um, you could go 6 on sheep, or you should go 6 on sheep, and you'll be fine. But 5 Britain uh, villagers is about equal to 6 generic ones. So now we can already go to the wood, and this is why Britons are so strong. And I actually recommend Britons for people that are, who are new to the game and want to play an archer sieve. If you want to play a cav sieve or like an infantry sieve, while Britons don't have the worst infantry, it's definitely not uh, the go-to. Uh, but for archer sieves, I recommend Britons. As one of them for sure. All right, so let's go to the wood now. As you can see, it's gonna be six on sheep or five with Britons, and then you're gonna go four to wood with this archer builder. Very, very nice stuff. And um, and yeah, so I had some nice scouting. I'm just finding my sheep now. There are eight sheep, four initial ones, and then another two patches of two on a standard Arabian map. Um, so definitely make sure you find all of those guys, and then also find your two boars, or in this case, a rhino and an elephant. At this point in the Dark Age, once you've got a lot of practice, this comes second, just becomes second nature, at least the easier part of the game. So you can use it to analyze the sieve, and if I can know where to click here, analyze the sieve matchup and uh, see what your opponent's uh, sieve is capable of. So my opponent is playing as Celts, and he has some really nice men at arm rushes, uh, some really nice economy with the wood, and some really nice siege and infantry long term. So uh, this tells me that I probably want to go Archer's Opening, because it's pretty good against infantry, it's good against most stuff in Feudal Age. Uh, and it will be good against pretty much everything except Siege and Castle Age. Magnals could be dangerous, but Britons have plus one range of archers, so it should be okay nonetheless. 
All right, gonna be bringing in the boar now, like usual. All right, do a clean boiler. Uh, I'll talk you through the boiler on the second one, um, but for now we're just gonna go ahead and get the house down. Prepare to go for the berries. So four on wood. What is a seven on boar? Now thirteen out of fifteen goes to build the house. Then goes to the berries. Getting closer to one year. Yo, thank you, Rhino Bed, for the tier one. Appreciate that, man. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the build here on Twitch. And then we're gonna go ahead and get that mill down right after this as well. All right, so our build order is looking very, very standard. And after you find all your resources, go scout your opponent. The reason we want to scout our opponent here is we're going to go for an archer rush. And we want to attack him in the feudal age. So to do that, we need to actually find where he is to be able to know where to send our archers. All right, so again, very important against human or AI to do this. Don't skip out on your scouting. All right, so quickly going four to mill now. Actually, the builder says to go three to mill, then take your second boar and then uh, send the fourth one. The reason we do this is because, look, this one's running out. If we sent the fourth one to, to the mill, we wouldn't actually have uh, time to get our next boar. So uh, it's actually three to the berries, then one to the boar, and then a fourth one to berries. That's the perfect build. And look how nice this one will be. I'm going to run the villager underneath. A lot of people get scared, but run it underneath and then garrison it and then wait till this one finishes and then shoot this one. You guys see the steps, garrison the low, low HP is fantastic, smooth. And the next villager, kind of messed up, should go to another house, so very nice. At this point, I'm gonna think of a wall with my houses because we do want a wall eventually. I'll start with the house here. That's gonna play with this wall over here. Next fill will go to woods, or okay, actually can go to food. Let's follow the builder step by step. Then the next few will go to the wood. So again, looking pretty decent on builder right now. Um, do I know where to hit my opponent? I see where his main gold is. That's good. I can, let's go find his wood. It's very important to see exactly where I can hit here. House for a tiny bit. No big deal, though. And you know what? Let's even get our barracks early. Why? Because my village is already here, and I want a wall with my building. So that's pretty good. All right. Thank you, Tube to Burger, for the $5. Getting that YouTube clout. Yeah, YouTube. Now we know he's generous. Very nice. Hello, YouTube. Thanks to Hera's build order video and G Fuel. I was able to grow my ELO plus 100 points. I'm now at a kill 740. <laughs> it is a verifiable fact that G Fuel makes you play better. So Agreed. get out there and get some G Fuel. And build orders. Chat, all you need is the links in the description. And just a few spare dollars here. And you'll be a, a 2k player in no time. So we're going to get our second lumber camp here. Thank you for that sellout, my man. And we're going to want five villagers on the new lumber camp. And this is exactly when I'm going to be sending them here. I hope you guys are paying attention to the build. Right after I click up, some of them go to sheep and some of them will go straight to that lumber camp. And we're also going to prepare our gold. So we're going to need three on gold total. There it is. Now the ones under your TC, since you want to go archers, what I like to do is actually take a couple of them and go to woods. Because you don't need so much food in the early game to go archers. You need mostly wood and gold. So I like to take some shots with one or two. But again, if you don't do this, it's not a big deal. It doesn't, it's not going to hurt your builder too, too much. So don't stress it. The important thing, though, is to have the three on gold and the five on each lumber camp. Look at this. And I do this every time. People think like there's maybe a secret to, to you know, getting down your dark ages or your feudal ages. It's the same thing every time. You just have to learn it once. Seriously, I put a lot of emphasis on builders. OK, because I profit off it. I, you know, I offer it to subs. I'm not going to lie. That's part of it. Um, but I also put a lot of emphasis because it's so effective, you know what I mean? So it, it really goes hand in hand there. So now I'm going to prepare two villagers. I'm not going to use ones under my town center because they're all weak. And if you build buildings on the front with weak villagers, the enemy scout can snipe you off if he's a human. In this case, it's an AI, it's not going to matter, but let's do good practices. I'm going to use these two healthy villagers. I'm going to make my ranges towards my opponents. I'm going to attack him here and make my ranges here towards them. And they want to get double bit axe right away as well. The next villagers, until you have seven on gold, gonna go from the TC to gold. All right, so I'm uh, gonna send four more villagers here. Always remember to stay hydrated here as well. Very nice. All right. Now you guys are wondering, is he drinking water or G Fuel? I'll leave it up to you guys to decide, but it is a G Fuel cup. When the uh, when the sheep runs out, see it a couple farms and then you know send villas to strike the trees if you want to save your wood for other things, like in this case, archers and a blacksmith. At this point with your scout, when you get to the feudal age, you get an extra two attack on your scout. So you feel free to harass your opponent's base. Um, you know, maybe pick off a villager or something. You don't have to do this, but it's pretty good. Another thing to do is also to continue scouting. All right, so at this point, I'm going to get a house. And you know what? Let's start walling on this side as well with a blacksmith. 
And again, there's no like textbook place to place your buildings. In general, you just want a wall with them. So notice how I'm building everything that I'm doing in a wall. That's kind of how I like to do things. Kind of how most people like to do things as well. Uh, and let's go to... Uh, so you can do seven or eight villages on gold. I am Britons and my archery ranges work faster. So if something works faster, you produce more, but it also costs more. So I'm going to send eight to gold here to compensate. I like that I picked Britons because I'm actually showcasing how to adapt your civs bonuses in a really nice way. And then once you have eight on gold, now it just becomes about farming and about attacking your opponent once you have fletching. Look at my resources. Let's pause. I get fletching and I have exactly one gold. I have very little food, very little wood. I'm not floating any resources here. And I skipped horse collar on purpose. Yeah, I skipped horse collar on purpose here because it's not affordable in the early game you want to afford your ranges but at this point you can go ahead and grab horse collar i didn't see too many farms before this so don't think it's too big a waste you'd rather get your ranges down earlier because look how fast the rush is now 13 minutes and i'm already attacking with six archers all right and i'm keeping you know everything's flowing smoothly here i'm walling up slowly using a few villagers walling up my map as well and don't worry where you take the villagers from as well like i take this one from the wood he'll build a house and he'll go right back to wood it's not going to disturb my builder and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and attack the AI as well. Let's try to set him back a little bit. Let's bring the scout to attack. The scout at this point is just an aggressive unit. It's just a military unit. You've scouted all you need to scout. And uh, try to seed farms as fast as you get the wood because I've talked about this a lot. Oh, he's got a tower here. Oh, AI is uh, playing well. He's got some skirmishers. But uh, we have fletching advantage here. So we're going to take out his archers quite nicely here. We have fletching. We can micro a little bit, but you don't have to do this right. Uh, a lot of it is just about, you know, attacking at the right time. You always win the fight here because you have fletching. And, all right, and then back at home, just kind of keep the eco rolling here. Uh, again, just seed farms as soon as you get the right resources and continue harassing the AI. At this point, you can kill his army because I have better units. Again, fletching is there. And I'm just flooding units to the front. Just to not kill him, we're going to go back. But in theory, you should try to kill as many villagers. But like I said, I'm going to not kill him. Because of the skill gap. And I want to show the rest of this builder real quick. At this point, I'm almost fully walled on the right side. I'm going to start fully walling the left side as well. Notice how I'm doing this, like, t slowly. I'm not fully walling right away, because then I can't afford... Uh, I should have a house, that's okay. Uh, these things happen. <laughs> these things happen. I always mess up in every builder. Um, I'm not fully walling right away, because then I can't afford my ranges. Let's auto-scout this, got the rest of the map. That's actually a decent thing to do. Don't shy away from it. At this stage of the game. Um... Yeah, so you want to start the walling the rest or the second part of the map. And don't wall too early because you can't afford your archers uh, in time. All right, now I'm lacking a bit of wood. At this point, I'm going to freestyle a little bit the build order. I'm going to send one more to wood because I see my berries are running out. And I want to make some farms with these guys. Because they're just closer to the place I want to farm with. And it was one of them. Oh, wall. Notice how the concepts are the same. Make farms, wall up your map, make archers, and spend your resources. But now my resources will start to pile up a little bit. And the reason this is happening is because I want to save up for Castleage. I have a plan in mind, all right? Saving up for Castleage is the plan. And uh, I'm going to work my way towards that as well, slowly building up that food. All right, very nice. At this point, I'm going to grab Wheelbarrow as well. Um, not a really amazing time for it. It should have been a minute earlier. But in general, you want to grab Wheelbarrow before you click to uh, Castleage. Uh, love the builders on Discord. Hey, YouTube, there it is. The people here are loving them. Make sure you come stop on by and just say hello to the Swiss stream and consider getting the builders eventually as well. Send him back to wood. And with these guys, when your bears run out, I'll seed one farm because I can afford it. The other one goes to wood. All right. Uh, actually, you know what? He'll go to gold, you know, because I might need an extra person on gold for castleage or to save up for castleage here as I produce archers. Notice I haven't stopped producing archers too much throughout this entire builder. And again, I'm not attacking, but in this case, you should try to attack as much as possible to do as much damage. And let's go for another raid here. Uh, and now my next step is just going to be to click up to the Imperial, or sorry, to the Castleage uh, as much as I can. Let's full wall this. I'll make one vill, and then I'll just click up the Castleage after it as well. And that should be quite nice. Army, better to create new army or click up. Um, it depends, actually. That that depends on the situation. If you can, if you're fully walled, you can easily try to click up. If you're open, you probably should create more army. And at this point, when you get close, just garrison your bills and click up. Very nice. And again, look at my resources. I'm not floating anything. Everything's low. I'm still making archers, and I'm still attacking my opponent here. All right. So let's back up. He's got a lot of skirms. I know I'm up faster because I practice builders AI. Unfortunately, he's not sub to the stream. So uh, I know he's going to be up too slow. But for real, the reason why he's not up yet is because he made armor and he made a lot of skirmishes, which cost food. So if you see he's got a lot of skirmishers, 
this is what you do. You don't panic. You don't say, oh, I have arches. What do I do? You just go back to your base. And at this point, always get these upgrades as well. So now the one resource you want to float at this point is actually wood. But we're going to reseed these farms just because I don't have that many farmers. But if I had like 16, 17 farmers, or if I felt like I had too much food, don't reseed the farms. Instead, send them to wood. So you want to have like around 800 wood when you get to castlate. Something like that could be really good. So now I see that my opponent has a lot of skirmishers. So I'm a, I will sit behind my base. I'm not going to move out now. Why? Because I have archers. He counters me. He'll win the fight. Even if it's an AI, he'll still win the fight. He's got skirmishers, right? So I'm going to wait until Castlage, where I get the power spike of crossbow with an extra range because I'm playing as Britons. So we'll still pick up this guy if we can. If not, we won't worry about it. And if he attacks me now, I'm fully walled. He can't do anything, right? So he comes at me with skirmishers, and I'll just defend. So again, now I have this farm ran out, I make the decision. I don't have that much food, I have a lot of wood. I'll remake it, no problem. If I had too much food, I don't remake it. Use your brain in the builder at this point. Don't just go automatic motor, right? This one, I feel like I have enough food. Just kidding, I have too much wood because I have <laughs> really cheap town centers with Britons. When you get to Castledge, crossbow, bodkin, bow saw right away. And good thing I reset those farms because I'm lacking some food. There it is. And then now, three TCs have to go down, so or two more. One on a wood, not the woods you're taking, a new wood, always. And one on a gold, and not the main gold, a secondary gold. So not the gold you're taking. So look at the setup, it's like this every time. One on the, one on wood, and one on the secondary gold, and I should already be moving out with my crossbows, I now have the power spike. And at this point in time, the build order is over, but I still haven't won the game. I do have an, have an advantage, however. Now, to use that advantage, I'm going to attack as fast as possible, because my opponent's still in Feudal Age. But I'm also going to try and spend my resources. The more I spend my resources, the more efficient my economy is, and the more I'm actually pumping out. It's like an investment. You don't want to wait and just stockpile them. They don't actually mean anything if they're stockpiled. But if I use them, invest them to the army or other eco, it's actually going to be better long term here, okay? Harrow will give financial advice one day in his life. For now, he's sticking with AoE. Uh, so stay tuned with us. And uh, when you get 3TC, just spend your resources. Anything that makes sense. Farms, um, ballistics, monastery. Literally anything that makes sense, okay? So now I've got a lot of wood. Let's go for a university. Let's make some farms. I'll need, I'm will need. i making town centers. I need more food to keep them going. Let's make some farms. And I'm, I'm going to continue making crossbows and villagers, basically. And he can't do anything now. I'll just, I'll just patrol. And I'll keep producing villagers at home. There's patrol. We'll take a good fight there. I promise you. And uh, let's continue working on our eco at home, making production. And yeah, he's just getting cleaned up. And look at the skirmishers. The skirmishers that we were scared of in the feudal age are now dying like flies. Look at this. And this is because of the builder, because of the attack. We're taking out everything here. And uh, we're going to continue advancing my economy here very slowly. All right. So we need a villager to make houses as well. Just spending my resources. Just spending my resources. At this point, I'm trying to save up for ballistics as well. Very nice. Delete that. Go ballistics. Cool. And the AI should be just about dead now. So, 3 TC booming. Got archers going. And, uh, yeah. At this point, just spend your resources on whatever makes sense. There's no guide for this part of the game that's going to tell you exactly how to play like a robot. There's no build order. You just kind of have to feel out the game and practice makes perfect at this stage. So, feel free to experiment. But always stay within the realm of your sieve. Do what your sieve's good at, in this case archers, and maybe I'll switch to something like, I don't know, some siege afterwards. Or maybe a forward castle to end the game. Speaking of which, also mining stone when you have TTCs, good timing for it. Replenishing my lumber camp, again, I'm spending my resources, anything makes sense. Armor, cool. Look at my resources, never really going too high. This one, I might get it later, I'm missing some wood for now. Alright. So yeah, there it is, just cleaning up some villagers and... I don't know how to make this guy resign if I'm being completely real, but uh, at this point, the game is pretty much over. And we will just, uh, you know, finish it off here. Use your new army that's not idle, and just go attack new stuff. Alright. Alright, I'm going to keep showcasing it till the AI resigns here. We want to get that sweet victory, right? Okay, let's keep making houses. I like to have one house villager just making houses throughout Castle Age. It really helps. And uh, he's just going to get surrounded very soon. There it is, and this is the extreme AI. Look how look how pathetic he looks, because he faced some guy who knows a builder, right? And I swear it doesn't take a lot of skill to do this kind of thing. It just takes practice. And now my research is starting to pile up.
Let's save towards Imperial Age, and yeah, maybe that's gonna work as well. I could also add more ranges, spending resources in any way. That could be cool. Uh, maybe a forward Siege Workshop could be good as well. You don't need a lot of skill to do this. Contrary to what a lot of people think, it really just practice your early game and you'll, you'll get there for sure. Alright, now I'm just making him resign <laughs> at this point. Uh, there it is. If anyone can give me tips on how to make AI resign, I feel like I can use those. Alright. Cool. Wait, I know one. Oh, it froze? Oh. Oh, I, wow, I haven't played single player in so long. I forgot it freezes when you, uh, or it pauses when you enter. <laughs> I'm not gonna cheat, though. That, that's that's cheating. And there he is. He's dead. Thou shalt albicate, or whatever it is. GG. I'm feeling good. My homies at school, they're like, Yo, here, we just beat the Extreme AI. I'm like, yo, it's happening, boys. I just did it. Your boy's back. The clout is real. Your teacher is even happy about you. You know, she gives you an, a bonus grade or something. And uh, and everything is perfectly fine. So again, just to recap, back to some serious notes here. Um, you know, I didn't do anything crazy. I obviously have practiced this, so it looked really clean. But if you, if you practice it yourself, you'll get to this level or at least somewhere close to it. Do the Dark Age as the Builder suggests. Do the Feudal Age as best as the Builder suggests. If you get rushed, try to adapt from it. Well up slowly, go for your archers, and then cast it to spend those resources and invest them into economy and military, constantly pressure your opponents, and uh, just you know make moves that make sense at this point. It takes a lot of practice. It takes hundreds of games to get to uh, you know top level or at least decent level, but I'd say it only takes a dozen games to beat the Extreme AI if you practice it the right way, which is to learn build orders and practice your early game. Thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, feel free to check out the links in the description, both to G Fuel, the sponsor of the video, and to, um, to me, the sponsor of the video. Uh, check out my Discord and my Twitch links in the YouTube uh, description section. And, uh, and consider subscribing to the Twitch channel to get access to all those builders if you think it's going to help you out, which probably will. Look at those times. Very nice, very nice. And uh, again, just clean execution here. Nothing too crazy. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.